Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armitstead, your host, and I am excited to welcome USU Assistant Professor Nadia Koraitam to the show. Welcome, Nadia. Thank you for having me. So this month, we're exploring the College of Engineering and some possible career paths we might get to uh, connected to that degree. So Nadia, I would love to learn more about your educational path as well as career timeline. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and walk us to walk us through how those paths led you here to USU. Yeah, so growing up, I was first introduced to engineering um, by a little um, of those mechanical building toys. Um, Growing up with two older brothers, you can imagine I was surrounded by them. Yes. And so that combined with my interest in mathematics and physics basically led me to choosing engineering as um, my career path. And then I got an opportunity to pursue my undergrad in mechanical engineering, as well as a higher education, um, which I was intrigued about doing more research and um, pursuing questions that were more in-depth about Mm -hmm. mechanical engineering. And so that's how I got into um, working in experimental fluid mechanics. And then from there, I was working with all these exciting um, high-speed images, um, so high-speed cameras to look in slow motion at some phenomena. <clears throat> and um, then I learned about this new area of research that's in 3D printing of metals. And so I combined my knowledge and background in experimental fluid mechanics and all of the experimental techniques that I had learned Um, with this newer field that was emerging at the time. And so this is what I pursued in my postdoctoral degree um, or postdoctoral time, I should say. And from there, um, I got the opportunity to join the faculty um, at at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Utah State University. Wow, what a unique career path. I don't know many people who can, can say that they have done what you have done, Nadia. I'm curious. So the reason we're having this conversation today is I actually came across an article um, uh, with the the Department of Engineering or the College of Engineering, and uh, I had seen some of your recent research. And so I would love uh, whatever you can give us today. I'd love to learn a little bit more um, about uh, some of your recent research and, and studies that are going on. What can you share? Yeah, so you're probably thinking about the Nuclear Engineering University Program Grant. Uh, So I was recently awarded that as part of this uh, Department of Energy funding that comes in every year. Um, It was a surprise for me to just be awarded such a prestigious funding. And um, what it entails is looking in more depth at these correlation and relationships of the in the 3D printing processes. So as we are printing a part with um, lasers, uh, as you can imagine, there are a lot of parameters that we could change. And so from there, we can get different microstructures and defect structures, which would result in very um, varied um, mechanical properties of a part. And so that would be the main focus of what we would be looking at with this grant. And we hope to um, capture different mechanical properties of materials that were printed with a uh, combination of parameters and then try and elucidate why that is the case. Wow, so, so interesting. Maybe to back up just a a second, I know a lot of students are interested in research. They hear about it. They know the university has lots of different research going on, but it's intimidating. Maybe they've never done it before. They don't have family members who who have researched before. So would you mind just like on a very basic level walking us through, you know, what does it look like for a faculty member or student to initiate some kind of university led research? Can you kind of walk us through the basics of that? 
Sure, yeah. So the process is a little bit different for a faculty member versus a student. So on a faculty member perspective, um, I would usually um, go in with a certain idea of research and then identify a funding agency that has interest in that area of research. Um, and then at that point, I would just write a proposal um, asking for funding for that specific idea. And then those whole like proposals that were, that were written are sent out to experts that evaluate uh, the soundness and the potential of success of these projects. So at that time, this is when on my end, there's a lot of waiting and anxiousness about <laughs> yes. whether or not that's gonna come through. Um, but once a decision comes in, usually the agency will um, notify the, the faculty members either with a positive or a negative outcome. Um, now, in the case of a positive outcome, this is when a student can get more involved. And from a student's perspective, they usually can join a project once funding is available. Um, so the best approach would be to contact a faculty member who works in an area that they're interested in um, and then provide them with like a little bit of information about what they like to work on, what they prefer in their course um, and studies, and then they can match with that professor and receive financial funding. Super helpful. And I apologize in advance that you may be getting student emails after this conversation, <laughs> but that, that's a helpful kind of process for students to be aware of, especially um, newer students. So I appreciate you you chatting with us about that. Um, if maybe if I may plug that in, yeah, I am ahead. looking for um, PhD students, mostly. So if anyone's interested and they think that additive manufacturing or 3D printing of metal is something of interest to them, I'd be happy to further discuss. Fabulous. We'll, we'll link that below in the episode so folks can check that out if they're interested. I love that. Awesome. So Nadia, to kind of transition a little bit, I want to talk about, so your previous work, you've done a lot of different types of engineering, if I understand correctly. So you have field engineer experience, design engineer experience. So talk to me a little bit about what it was like to work kind of in industry and, and being an engineer. And then what is it like to transition into this kind of new world of, of being a professor? Yeah, so as a, a student in mechanical engineering, as I imagine many of the students might be experiencing right now, you feel a little bit um, torn between different areas that you could go into. So you could be an HVAC engineer, you could work in um, aeronautics, you can work in, um, in, in oil and gas, etc. And so I was curious about all the different areas of uh, potential work that I could be involved in. And this is when I started looking for internships. And about every summer, uh, almost during my undergrad, I was working in some type of an internship to explore those areas in more details. Wow. Awesome. I love that you're sharing how you kind of started to get involved. I think sometimes, you know, getting that first internship or maybe taking on that first research assignment can be, can feel uncomfortable and, and challenging. So I think that's a really great step. Um, and to kind of continue that, that thought. So talk to me a little bit about on the flip side, you know, as, as a professor, talk to me, you know, are, is a lot of your background knowledge used in the research that you do? Do you get to hold on to some of those pieces that you were interested in before? What does that look like? So um, in the process of, I'm guessing, the internships that I went through, um, it's more so a experiences that allowed me to kind of explore those areas and ask myself questions of whether it was something I wanted to pursue as a career or not. Um, and even though I liked many of those uh, topics that I had interned in, I then found myself interested in the learning process itself. So mm -hmm. I found that I was always asking more questions and looking for answers on like a, a smaller detail level. And that's basically what led me to where I am now in that I'm interested in doing the research and asking questions and looking for answers to things that haven't been explored yet. So, so good. I, yeah, love that. And I love that, again, you're kind of hitting on this in, 
in our career design center, we'd like to refer to it as prototyping, where you test something out on a small scale. And an internship is a great way to test out careers on a small scale, right? Because they're short. Great point. Um, and so I love that you were able to do a lot of that testing early on and say, here are some things that I'm interested in. Maybe here's some things I'm not interested in. And that has kind of funneled you to where you are today, which is really cool. So love that. I would love to chat a little bit more about the day to days. When people think of a professor, they probably think of somebody who's grading a lot, um, lesson planning, and I'm sure that's part of what you do. Um, but do you mind walking us through maybe a typical day as a professor here at USU? Yeah, sure. So um, on a couple of the days or like a few days of the week, um, I would be in uh, in the classroom and um, lecturing. And so some of the days will look like, as you said, preparing for lectures and then going into the classroom to um, deliver, deliver a lecture and then um, correcting homework and other um, deliverables from students. But then in other parts of my day, I would be also working on um, writing proposals. So as we talked about trying to acquire the funding throughout. Um, and so writing proposals takes a long time longer than one would probably <laughs> like to spend sometimes. Yes. Um, but then, so there is teaching, writing proposals, and then performing research, which comes in the form of advising students and then discussing with them what are their next steps in um, their type of research. Great. That's a great overview. And to transition a little bit, I'd love to hear about uh, maybe some of the highlights of your work and maybe some of the areas that are maybe not quite as energy giving, maybe a little <laughs> bit more draining. So what are some pros and cons of, of being a professor? Yeah, so I would say my favorite part is the interaction with the students. Um, it's very um, rewarding to be with the students and see them grow on a personal as well as on an academic level. And so that's one of the my favorite parts. Um, I would say probably the least would be the disappointment that comes with um, not so successful projects or proposals. So we need to deal with a lot of um, having our work rejected by other experts. Oh, you bring up a really interesting topic. We're going to do a little, a little dive deeper into that because I'm curious if you don't <laughs> mind, I'd love to hear about a time maybe when you had something uh, like a project proposal um, that did not go well. You know, how did you handle maybe one of the first times, how did you handle that feedback or criticism and, and keep moving forward? Yeah, so we tend to usually just act from um, our emotions, right? So as soon as you receive an email that says, so we regret to tell you that we are not going to fund your project. And this is when it really hits. And you think I've wasted all my time working on this and like investing uh, effort into it. Um, but then I think it's a, a place where we are growing. So we are learning about how to have a successful proposal in the next step. And that also applies in other areas, I would say, not only in writing a proposal, but it could be um, seen and applied in other areas. What I would suggest is just to take a step back and just digest all the information that we have received. Uh, most of the time, it's a lot of constructive criticism. So it's good to take the time and understand why those experts um, have reached to that conclusion. And then we can contact, contact them again, ask for clarifications and maybe more questions of like, what could I have done better? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love that what I hear you saying is separating um, the work, the proposal, the whatever you submitted, separating that from yourself and being able to just look at that critically and say, oh, they didn't like my right. proposal. It's not that they didn't like me or anything like that. Um, so I love that you're kind of separating the two and just saying, yeah, what can I learn from this experience and, and how can I grow and be better? So I think that's a great approach. All right. Next, I would love to chat a little bit about characteristics of somebody who might be successful. And you could talk to the engineering world, or if you want to talk to maybe being a professor, what are some skills that you feel are, are necessary to be successful in, in the roles that you've had? 
Yeah, I would say um, most successful mechanical engineers that you would meet um, probably are those that are curious and self-driven. Um, so at, as very um, similar to other engineering disciplines, um, having curiosity and being self-driven to work towards success is one very important trait. And then I would suggest students to just work on their soft skills and try to build on those in um, kind of, the, because those will be their first point of um, contact with like the outside world. So with the, um, with any of their um, companies that are hiring. Basically. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point that um, even if you have a strong engineering or, or more technical background, the first interactions, you know, it's it's networking or it's an interview or it's a resume where you have to use some of those those different skills. So I love that you're bringing up that point. I think that's that's really important. Um, so Nadia, I happen to know a fun fact about you, which is you know and and speak several languages, at least four that I know of. I am so curious, what was the motivation to learn these different languages? Um, so my my main motivation, basically, I'm bilingual um, just by where I am from. So I am Lebanese by origin. And so back home, uh, I went to a French school. So my mother tongue is Arabic. And then um, I've also learned French as a mother tongue. And then pursuing my uh, education further, I had to also learn English. And so I did that. Um, and, and then I had interest in languages in general, which is why I have also taken on learning Italian um, because of the sound of the language and um, liking how, how it is. Wow, that is so incredible. Well, and I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I'm curious, have, have there ever been benefits of being able to, to speak multiple languages within your jobs? Is that something you've been able to use like on the job at all? Maybe, I mean, Speaking multiple languages probably came in when I was in school. Um, and so during my higher education, I um, graduated from KAUST in Saudi Arabia. So it's an international university where people from 90 different nationalities were coexisting. Wow. Um, and so I think that it helped me uh, communicate and connect more with um, different people from different backgrounds. And to this date, I mean, these have been connections that I really value. Absolutely. Such a cool insight. Well, Nadia, uh, before we wrap up today, I do want to ask one final question. And that question is, what advice do you have um, in terms of networking for students who are maybe interested in pursuing um, both a degree, but also career in engineering? So, I think networking has affected me personally um, in terms of making my own career decisions. And since we did mention the internships that I've gone to, they've most been the result of some type of networking with a company representative or a researcher or an academic in some career fair. Um, and so I do encourage students to get themselves out um, present themselves to new people when they are in a uh, networking setting, as well as treat every introduction as if it is an interview. So any person that they meet might have their next big opportunity. Oh my goodness. Yes. That is a great nugget to end on. I love, I love that. And, you know, I've heard, I've heard other folks share that, that, uh, yeah, treat every interaction like, like an interview because it is, um, I, you know, it's a small world and it's funny how the, that one connection we have, you know, with so-and-so ends up becoming really important five years later when we're maybe looking for a job, for example. So I love that. I think that's a great piece of advice. Well, Nadia, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us a little bit, help students, again, just explore uh, the, the world of engineering and, and get some ideas. So appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for having me. This has been fun. We hope you loved this episode of the USU Career Studio podcast. 
If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share this episode with your friends and family. 